Hey guys, welcome to today's video, which is on some alternative ways that you can use the mood paint. Today I'll be working on some regular stiletto tips and I'll be using three colours from Colour Me Pretty, Black Caviar, French White, Barely There and from IBD, Dockside Diva. You'll also of course need your liquid crystal from Solar Colour Dust. Now before I get into showing you the designs, I wanted to have a quick chat to you about some things that I've noticed about the mood paint and let you know how I've overcome a few of the issues that I've had. Now both of these nails are obviously full cover, but you'll notice that the one on the right actually has a smoother sort of cleaner finish. The one on the left has a few little dots in it and just a little bit more of a um, muddily sort of uh, finish on it. It's not quite as smooth and perfect looking and there's a few little dots you can just see there. There's a, a decent sized little dot there. And that's actually something that's happened as I've gotten through the paint pot a little bit further. When I've been using it, I've just been opening the pot and popping it on my desk and dipping my dotting tool on my paintbrush straight into it and using it straight from there. What I didn't really register the whole time that I've been using it is that while that paint pot is open, the paint is still actually drying. So it's actually gotten quite gluggy and thick and it's even got some um, sort of chunks in it that are obviously dried paint that I've had to lift out and remove. So I'll show you what I did to try and revive what was left in my pot. So I bought this little two-part tea strainer from a local homewares shop near me and then I've got just a normal paintbrush that I bought to use with the mood paint. What I've done is I've poured what was left in my pot straight into the top part of that strainer and then used my little paintbrush to sort of gently push through um, the parts that are still liquidy and smooth so trying to keep any of the dried or chunky sort of sections on the top and pushing through any of the good paint that was left. And I also actually wiped out my pot as well at the same time. Then you can go ahead and lift that top section out and wipe off any good paint that's come through and put it straight back in your pot. It didn't fix it completely, but it did do a pretty good job. So the moral of the story is to decant. So. Don't use it straight from the pot where possible, take a little bit out, pop it on a palette or in a ring palette or something like that and use it straight from there. So having said all of that, let's get straight into the first design which is of course full cover. Now I choose to do this with a fine liner paintbrush that I got from a local craft store. Some people might prefer to use a dotting tool though, that's also another option. I initially tried using a normal paintbrush to do this, but I found that um, it shows brush strokes really easily. So if you're really good, much better than me at having a really light touch, you might be able to get away with using a larger brush and then doing this a little bit quicker. Um, for me though, I found that it was easier to have the fine liner brush or even a dotting tool and get a smoother effect that way. So as I said, keep a really light touch here. The aim is to get as smooth a look as possible while having as little paint as possible because it can actually take a little while to dry. Now it's also very important not to go over the edges. You do not want to cap the edge with the mood paint. The builder gel or top coat that you put over the top needs to have contact with that gel layer underneath the mood paint. Otherwise you'll have lifting or peeling issues. Once that's dry, you'll need to seal it with a builder in a bottle or another similar product. For me, I prefer to use Lastic from Planet Nails. Once again, make sure you cap those edges this time with the gel to seal everything in. Once that's cured, I like to remove the inhibition layer and apply the glossy top coat. Now on to design number two, which is a mood French tip. I'm using Planet Nails gel paint in number 15, which is their black. And the base color that I'm starting with here is Barely There from Color Me Pretty. 
I actually really suck at getting a nice French smile line with gel polish. So I followed a YouTube tutorial by Kirsty Meekin from Nao Nails, where she actually sort of shows all the different points on the nail that you should kind of aim for, if that makes sense, when you're doing your smile line. So um, I am new to YouTube, but I will try to figure out how to link to her video because it's actually really quite helpful if anyone else has trouble as well. And I do apologize for moving out of the screen all the time. I was concentrating so hard on trying to do it properly that I kept forgetting um, where the camera was. One thing I did actually do, which I do tend to have a bit of a bad habit of doing, is I popped the gel paint on a little bit too thick. So of course that can cause some problems with curing and um, either crinkling or just getting uncured gel under there. So do as I say and not as I do um, and don't pop it on too thick. It doesn't need to be thick because it is very pigmented. Once you've cured that, you can go ahead and wipe away the inhibition layer and apply the mood paint to the black tip just as we did with the full cover nail. Once again, don't go over the edges of the nail with the mood paint. If anything does make it over the edge, you can just wipe that really quickly from underneath with a lint-free wipe. Once that's dry, we're going to go back in again with elastic and make sure that you seal those edges. You'll probably find that the tip is a little bit higher than the rest of the nail, so you might want to add a little bit more elastic just to the center to even it out and give it a nice arch and shape. Once that's cured, we'll again go in and remove the inhibition layer and then add the glossy top coat. On to design number three and we're going to do some mood drips and I'm going to show you this on both a black and a white nail. So this time we're going to start with a white nail and we're going to use our planet gel paint in black again to make the drip pattern. I start with a few different size dotting tools, whatever I feel like at the time, make the dots and then I move on to a gel liner brush to connect everything up together. Another thing that I've noticed with if you do tend to pop the gel paint on a little bit too thick like I sometimes do um, and you end up with any crinkling or anything is that the mood paint will actually reflect that. So really try and get a nice smooth surface with it if you can um, or worst case scenario if it's not as smooth as you would like you can always pop a layer of elastic over the top again and just get that to sort of um, even out and give you a bit more of a smooth surface to work with. Once you're happy with your design, go ahead and cure and again wipe away the sticky layer. Then we are essentially going to rinse and repeat. So I have gone ahead and used my dotting tool for the entire uh, design here when I've popped on the mood paint. You can use a liner brush if you want, dotting tool, whatever works for you. But essentially again, same rules apply. We're just going to pop it over the black section try and keep it as smooth looking as possible without making it too thick and again don't go over the edges. As with all of these mood paint nails we're going to wait till that's completely dry then we'll pop on our elastic making sure that everything is encapsulated nicely, the edges are capped then we're going to wipe away the sticky layer and this time we're going to pop on a matte top coat.
I then like to use the rubber top coat from the gel bottle to make the drips glossy again and give them a nice raised effect. This top coat is super thick and super glossy so it's really nice to give you that nice raised effect in just one coat without having to do a couple of coats and again as I said super glossy so it gives you that really beautiful finish. So my first step is to place a small amount of gel over the full coloured area of where the nude paint is just to sort of mark out the borders of where I want that gel to be. Once I've covered that full area then I will go in and add some more gel to raise it as much as I like. I like the drips to be quite three dimensional so I tend to add a fair bit more gel and I'll also turn the nail upside down and pull gently the gel away from the tip so the tip's not too crazy thick and pull it right down into those drips so it looks more realistic. Once you're happy with that you can cure and that nail is finished. For the black version of this design you'll obviously start with a black nail and you can go straight in with the mood paint so it's a little bit quicker. Go straight in and paint your dots and your drips as we did with the white nail. Once again I cannot say this enough, do not go over the edge with the mood paint. If you do it will almost definitely peel on the edges. Once the paint is dry, the process is the same for this nail as it is for the white version. You're going to cap the nail in plastic, wipe off the sticky layer, apply your matte top coat and then use the gel bottles rubber top coat to create three dimensional drips. Design number four is a brush stroke effect. This design's meant to be quite random, so you can have a play with it however you see fit. I popped some paint down the side of the nail to give me something to drag through, and then just dragged the liner brush that I have across the nail until I was happy with how it looked. Once again, once that's dry, cap it with elastic, wipe the sticky layer, and add your glossy top coat. Design 5 is a speckled sort of design that actually reminds me of rust. Grab a lint free wipe, um, you can see the type that I'm using but you can experiment with different ones. Wrap around your finger until you get a relatively flat section and then dab it into the mood paint and dab it onto the nail. Keep dabbing until you get a look that you like, though be aware that that paint is drying quite quickly while you're dabbing. If you go for too long you'll actually start to pull the paint back off again, you'll need to start again. And the same process again, once that's dry add your elastic, wipe and add your glossy top coat. This design's actually one of my favourites, I really like it. For design 6 we're going a mood leopard print. And the base colour for this nail is Dockside Diva by IBD. Again we're using our Planet Gel Paint in black and a medium sized dotting tool just doing random splotches over the nail. And once again I did it too thick so I did end up with a little bit of parkering which you will see at the end you can see um, how the mood paint will show that up. Cure the dots and wipe off the sticky layer. Then we're going to be good boys and girls and decant some of our mood paint onto the palette so we don't leave the pot open. Then just grab your dotting tool and cover all of those splotches with mood paint. 
as I've said before, I do like to put it on fairly thick so you get a really vivid color effect, though it does kind of look gross while it's while I'm painting it there. I feel like it looks kind of like pus. <laughs> I don't know, it's kind of like some sort of disease, but either way, you get a lovely end effect. Once that's dry, I pop in with a little short liner brush and just sort of put a really random um, line around usually two, sometimes three of the sides of the little leopard dots. Whenever I do a leopard nail while I'm doing it, I always feel like it looks pretty crap, like I've done a really bad job, but they always seem to come together in the end. So don't lose faith if it looks kind of strange while you're doing it. You don't need to, but if you want to, you can always flash cure every now and then on these just to make sure nothing moves. Once you've got all those little borders in place, then I do a few little random lines or dots in those little gaps wherever it looks like it needs something. When you're popping your elastic on over the top of this design, it could be a little lumpy, so um, I tend to add a little bit more just down the center of the nail and even sometimes turn it upside down to get a nice shape and then cure it. Then again, after wiping the sticky layer off, for this design I like a matte top coat. The last design I have for you guys is a mood unicorn horn. This was suggested to me by someone on my Facebook page. Thank you so much. It was such a good idea and I really like how it turned out. We're just starting with a black nail with the sticky layer removed. Then we're going to go in with a thin liner brush and paint the horn design. Once again, when I first tried a unicorn horn nail in gel polish, I followed a Kirsty Meekin tutorial. So I might even see if I can find that tutorial for you guys and link it here as well. Essentially though, we're going to start on the bottom left a little bit lower and come across the nail and end up a little bit higher on the right. I often like to start with a small amount of my brush and just put the line into place and then add more paint on top of it. You can actually see here some of the little blobs that I was talking about of paint that's dried from me leaving the pot open. It does make using the paint a little bit harder since it was freshly opened and it is fairly expensive especially to Australia once you add in postage and the dollar exchange. So. Um, I wanted to give you guys that info at the start of the video so hopefully you can keep your pots um, as nice as possible and you don't have this issue with it as I did. Now the process from here is the same as with the mood drip nails. Once the paints dry you're going to pop on elastic and cap those edges really well. Then we're going to pop on a matte top coat. And then we'll go ahead and use the gel bottle rubber top coat again to get those horn lines glossy and raised and beautiful again. And once again, I get that gel into place first. Then when I'm happy with where it is, I will add some more gel on top before I cure it to get the height that I like. I do tend to like to flash cure between each line, um, that might be a little excessive but I do, I do them quite close so I don't really trust myself to not have one run into the other one. So I do it that way, you do it however you like. Um, I figure flash curing is 10 seconds and if you like you can switch to the opposite hand and do uh, a few lines on the other hand while one hand is curing. Um, doesn't really take any extra time. I don't think if you do it that way because you're doing the lines anyway It's not like you're not working. So um, I just do it that way because I don't want to have to take them off and do it again <laughs> The 
This is a bit of a side note and I don't want to rant on too much about this, but I did just want to say don't be afraid to charge for these nails, guys. This paint is expensive, it is super cool, and it does take a lot of, you know, time and effort to learn how to use it properly, to manipulate it, um, especially if you're doing something like the drips or the unicorn horn, you've got, you know, multiple layers on that nail that you're doing of art. So don't be afraid to charge for it. Once you've done the last of those lines, there is nothing else to do and this nail is complete. So that's it guys, there are eight different nails there that I've done for you, seven different designs because two of them are the drip nail just on a different coloured background. I think this brush stroke nail could be really cool done in different directions as well, like the strokes coming from the tip or coming from the cuticle as well, so if any of you guys do that I'd love to see how it turns out. Or it could even be really cool with a fan brush if you dipped your fan brush in your mood paint and then dragged that across the nail maybe you know, on a diagonal or something like that, that could be really cool as well. You can tell I was obviously such a 90s mood ring girl because, oh my god, I can't stop playing with these things. I'm still so fascinated by the colour change, it's amazing. These last clips aren't sped up or anything, I wanted to show you how quickly it changes. You can see it changing right in front of your eyes and even just from me popping my finger behind that now you can just see the warmth of it is just changing it right as you watch it's pretty cool i hope that was helpful to give you some ideas of what you can do with this paint and i really do mean it when i say please tag me in anything you make because i would absolutely love to see what you do with it take care guys and i will see you in the next video bye